GitHub is the number one code hosting platform in the world, being used by over 100 million people. But how did it start? Who made it? And how? GitHub was created to provide a platform for developers to collaborate on code more effectively using the version control system Git. It aims to simplify the process of sharing and managing code, making it easier to work together on projects. GitHub is unique due to its user-friendly interface and extensive integrations. It offers features like GitHub Actions and GitHub Pages for hosting. Additionally, it has social networking site features like a feed and followers. GitHub was initially developed by four developers using Ruby on Rails in February 2008, while the company was formed in 2009 in San Francisco. When created, it was truly ahead of its time. On the 24th of February 2009, GitHub announced that within the first year of operating, it had accumulated nearly 50,000 repositories. That same year, the site was used by over 100,000 users and had grown to host 90,000 unique public repositories. By 2010, GitHub was hosting over 1 million repositories, which is a 10 times increase compared to 2009. And a year later, this number doubled. By this time, Reed Wright reported that GitHub had surpassed SourceForge and Google Code in total number of commits for the period of January to May 2011. In 2012, GitHub receives over $100 million in investments, primarily from Andreessen Horowitz. After the funding, GitHub also gets a new CEO, Tom Preston Warner. In 2013, GitHub launches contributions, in addition to user profile pages that shows which repositories the user has been active in, as well as a calendar of activities. This is how the max contribution graphs were born. GitHub also passes 3 million users and by the end of the year is hosting more than 10 million repositories. GitHub releases the Atom text editor. It was a super clean and modern text editor. A feature making it unique compared to others was that it was hackable. It could be customized using CSS, HTML, and JavaScript. GitHub also opened an office in Japan, which was its first office outside of the United States. Sadly, later in 2022, GitHub announced the end of life of Atom. Everything was going great for GitHub, but then something truly unexpected happened. On the 28th of February 2018, GitHub fell victim to the third largest distributed denial of service, DDoS, attack in history. At its peak, traffic was reaching nearly 1.5 terabits per second. That is just like uploading this video over 200 times per second. The DDoS attack lasted 15 minutes. GitHub stayed transparent and wrote about the whole situation on their blog post, where we can find a lot of key information. In response, GitHub engineering teams implemented many changes, like better DDoS mitigation platforms. To this day, a situation like this has not repeated for GitHub. Microsoft has been a significant user of GitHub since 2012, using it to host many of its open source projects and tools. On the 4th of June 2018, Microsoft announced its intentions to acquire GitHub Inc. for a price tag of $7.5 billion. The deal closed five months later. After the acquisition, GitHub continued to operate independently as a community, platform, and business. Under Microsoft, that was led by Nat Friedman, who was CEO for over three years until he resigned in November 2021.
he was replaced by Thomas Donke. Concerns over the sale increased many users' interest in GitHub competitors like Bitbucket, GitLab, and SourceForge, which has reported spikes in new users intending to migrate projects from GitHub to their respective services. Under Microsoft's leadership, GitHub did a thing, or should I say a couple things? Here are two of the most important ones. March 2020, GitHub announced that it was acquiring NPM, a very popular JavaScript package manager, which is used by developers all around the world. The acquisition deal was closed one month later for an undisclosed amount. 2nd of February 2020, GitHub took a snapshot of every active public repository, the GitHub Archive program, made by GitHub to ensure the preservation of open source software for future generations. The 12 terabytes of data was stored in a long-term archival facility. Each participant got a special badge on their GitHub profiles too. This is how it looked. These days, projects on GitHub can be accessed and managed using the standard git command line interface. All standard git commands work with it. GitHub allows users to browse public repositories on the site and offer advanced repository filtering. There are multiple desktop clients to use with GitHub, like GitHub Desktop and Git Kraken, to name a few. In addition, GitHub provides social media-like functions such as feeds, followers, and a social network graph. Today, GitHub offers many different other services, including GitHub Enterprise. GitHub Enterprise is a self-managed version of GitHub with similar functionality. It can be run by a cloud provider or using your own hardware. In November 2020, the source code for GitHub Enterprise servers were leaked online in an apparent protest against DMCA takedown of YouTube DL, a popular YouTube video downloader tool. According to GitHub, the SCOS code was leaked by GitHub accidentally sharing the code with an enterprise customer and not from an attack on GitHub servers. GitHub Pages is a static web hosting service for personal websites and project documentations. All GitHub Pages content is stored in a GitHub repository. GitHub is integrated with Jekyll's static website and blog generator. Each time the repository is updated, the website is regenerated and updated on GitHub Pages. Websites generated through the service are hosted either as subdomains of the github.io website or can be connected to custom domains that you buy. GitHub also operates a paste bin like site called Gist, which is for code snippets compared to GitHub repositories, which are usually used for full projects. Gist builds on a traditional, simple concept of a paste bin by adding version control for code snippets and easy forking. Until March 19, 2018, unregistered users could upload Gists. A registration requirement was reportedly added to combat spamming on the page of recent guests. GitHub launched a program called the GitHub Student Developer Pack to give students free access to popular development tools and services. For the program, GitHub partnered with many big companies to launch it. Here are many of them. Comment if I should try the program out. GitHub provides some software as a service integrations, SaaS, for adding extra features to projects using GitHub Marketplace, a simple store where you can find many free and paid integrations from popular companies and tool providers. GitHub sponsors allows people to financially support developers of projects hosted on GitHub. Developers don't pay any fees and get 100% of the funds. Furthermore, 
they can still link services like Patreon on their GitHub profile. The Verge said that GitHub sponsors works exactly like Patreon because developers can offer various funding tiers that come with different perks and they'll receive recurring payments from supporters who want to access them and encourage their work, except with zero fees to use the program. You guessed it. GitHub has its own AI service, an AI programmer assistant. Copilot offers advanced code completion, powered by models from OpenAI. Copilot helps developers write code faster by predicting entire lines and even functions based on the context of the current project. It has integrations with all major code editors and IDEs. What is the future of GitHub? While we don't know for sure, there are three major places we can get information about the future of GitHub. Firstly, based on GitHub's announcements and plans from the GitHub Universe 2024, we can see things like better AI integration in your GitHub and programming workflow, continued development of GitHub Actions and code spaces, advanced security tools to address software vulnerabilities using the Security Open ID Connect, workshops and new resources for the GitHub community. Then we can look at githubnext.com where you can find all the research projects from GitHub. One example project that looks promising to me is Learning Sandbox. It's a sandbox made to help you learn and code whatever you want to. The tool seems to be explaining step by step how to code your request. That on the website there are a couple of videos showcasing the prototype tool. To be honest, I can't wait for this to be a real thing. I'll link the website in the description. Finally, GitHub will improve, you guessed it, it's AI. GitHub has its own AI programmer called Copilot, as you may know. In 2023, GitHub announced its plans for Copilot X, mentioned to use GPT-4. However, this is pretty unlikely as there are newer and better models available. GitHub has changed a lot since it was created over 15 years ago. From a simple project to the most popular code hosting website being used by over 100 million people worldwide. Thank you for watching.